today we are talking about the indigenous people of California and specifically the Yokuts. Now, before we officially get started, we need to have a little quick briefing on terminology. The term Yokut refers to many groups of people. In fact, the word directly translates to people. So not every person who is an indigenous person of the San Joaquin Valley likes the term. Before Europeans immigrated, the group that we now call the Yokuts was actually 60 different tribes and none of them called themselves Yokuts. It was a invention after the fact. So um, mo most of them prefer to use their tribe name. But for the purposes of um, education and generalizations about this large group, I'm going to use the term. But I'm going to depend on you to be smart enough to know when to use it. Um, so kind of we, we need to know what I'm talking about when I say a large area. So here's a map of the California with all the different um, indigenous regions lined out. And let's compare that to the modern day counties. And then you can see that the territory of the Yokuts is kind of modern day Fresno, Kings County, Madera, Mariposa, kind of touching Sacramento and um, San Francisco. Um, if you think that California is just beaches and movie stars, you need to come to the Central Valley because here it's farmland as far as the eye can see. Around here, a lot of people do um, boating and hiking and nearly everybody you're going to meet is some way connected to agriculture or farming. Like that's just what it is around here. If you look at the San Joaquin Valley, it's a very large valley. We divide it into the South Valley, the Central Valley, and the North Valley, but in comparison on this map, you can see how big that valley actually is and which territories kind of were that Yokuts. Um, the Yokuts don't really have a lot of ceremonies in comparison to some other Native Americans in other states. Um, they don't really have a lot of conflicts among themselves, and they're pretty friendly among the tribes. Uh, most Yokuts had more permanent homes, but those that were around Tulare County or Tulare Lake were a little bit more temporary. Anyone who lives near any shoreline really can't be very permanent. The lake levels rise and lower with the seasons. There are some really strong winds that blow through that area, and you'll even hear it high, high wind advisory still these days. So for some sub-tribes, housing was a communal thing that they picked up and then they carried them with them to the next spot, like a tent that was like 30 foot long kind of look. Um, the Yokuts, like most indigenous groups, ate what was around them in nature for their diet. So they had fish and game birds and elk and deer, antelope, grass, nuts, berries, seeds, that kind of thing. Uh, they would dry the meat and then um, turn it into something kind of like jerky. They used salt in a lot of their food. So if you were to taste their food today, you would say, oh, wow, that's salty compared to things that you're used to eating. Now, about that grass that's everywhere in the San Joaquin Valley. California is known for these huge redwood trees and our giant sequoias. We're, um, we're kind of famous for our ocean lines and shorelines. Anyone who studies California history knows that Hollywood is so successful due to its location. One hour driving one direction, you're at the beach. Drive the other direction for an hour and you're on the mountains. Uh, you can film a western, right? The desert is a hop, skip, and a jump the other way. Cal Southern California has every different terrain you can imagine. But the San Joaquin Valley? Grass. <laughs> Big open field, large areas of grass. That's why we're so successful in farming and agriculture these days. As the spring comes to a close every year, dried grasses stretch on for miles and miles and miles. It's one of the reasons that in California we have the fire season because there are parts of the Central Valley in July and August and September. It's just miles and miles of dried grass. But for the Yokuts, when you have plenty of something, you make use of it. The Yokuts are really known for the baskets they weave from the grasses. They are highly prized by collectors today. The Tulare County Museum in Mooney Park has many, many of these baskets on display. And when you go and when you look at it, number one, you're going to be like, wow, like look at that design. And then number two, you're going to have to pause and go, wow, they made that out of grass. Like that's, that's crazy. But when we talk about how prized it is by collectors today, these are ones that are currently on sale online. You could find them. Check out the price. But as we know, not everyone in every time of history valued other cultures. These first Californians that I'm talking about, they were friendly. They were creative. They were strong people. And then came the European immigrants. And then came the California gold rush. Gold was discovered in 1848. 
and the 1850s was a very, very bad time for all the indigenous people of California. In 1851, the governor of California, while he was governor, said the following. A war of extermination would continue to be waged until the Indian race should become extinct, and it was beyond the power or wisdom of men to avert the inevitable destiny. Like, like this guy hated the fact that they existed. Now, I, I know we're supposed to judge historical characters on historical empathy, you know, like what was normal for their time? What were all the factors that led them to, you know, come to this conclusion? But so if, if we think about this guy here, Peter Burnett, he was born in Tennessee. He was born in Tennessee around about the time of the Civil War. And the Tennessee, for those of you who don't know, joined the Confederacy during the war. And that's where he was born. So he was already thinking, you know, of the natural order of things, right? That certain people should be slaves and certain people should be slave owners, I guess. And then um, later on, he moves to Missouri. And then later on, he moves to California. Um, while he's in California, he's kind of, you know, rubbing elbows with some of the rich, famous, important people there. And he becomes governor. So I, I, I want to use that information, you know, to figure out how he came to his opinions like this. But right, wrong, or indifferent, he said a group of people should become extinct. That, that really bothers me. The point here is that life was not good for indigenous peoples and the Yokuts were smack in the middle of that state and that time in history. Greed of people had sealed their fate. If you want to look it up, historians call that period of time the California Genocide. Between 1850 and 1900, well, let's just say at the end of 1900, 93% of Yokuts were dead. In the 1870s, specifically, it changed from more about exterminating the people to turning them into citizens of the United States and instead exterminating their culture. Richard Henry Pratt said the following. A great general has said that the only good Indian is a dead one. In a sense, I agree with the sentiment, but only in this that all the Indian there is in the race should be dead. Kill the Indian in him and save the man. Yeah. So things really didn't get much better. I mean, not, I mean, let's be honest here. Um, Richard Henry Pratt is also a very important historical figure because he's the founder of the Carlisle Indian School. And uh, for those of you who don't know what Indian schools are, it's a place where they killed the culture of Native Americans. Um, and that you brought these children to these schools and you taught them to speak English, you taught them uh, you know, um, about George Washington, you taught them math, you taught them science. But when you put a large group of students like that together and they don't really wanna learn what you learn, that you, or you know, they don't wanna learn what you have to teach, sometimes you have to use more violent methods to teach them. Nearly every single Indian school, especially the Carlisle Indian School, didn't have a playground at bow, at, out back. They had a cemetery out back for students who died while in the custody of the school. So if that doesn't break your heart, I don't know what is. Here's an example of what I'm talking about, um, of this cultural genocide. This is a student in Richard Henry Pratt's School for Indigenous People. This photo is supposed to be a success story that Richard Pratt was bragging about. This man is a Navajo, and you can clearly see my point. Schools like this were popping up all over the USA. So it kind of sounds like all bad news for the Yokuts, doesn't it? Well, during those decades, during that time, it kind of was. Some people, some strong, resilient people, are able to take bad times and turn them into good opportunities. The thing about separating young people from their families and their elders and their culture and shoving them all together in these kinds of schools means that some of these young people are going to make friends with other young people from different tribes. And then suddenly now you have activists. You have passionate young people from all areas united. It is these people and their children and their grandchildren who fought to gain back the ground they lost and get their heritage back 
Go look up what happened in November of 1969 on Alcatraz Island. They call it the occupation of Alcatraz. Now, today, we have members of the Yokut tribes fighting water pollution on their lands, use of herbicides on their plants, saving the salmon in the north, saving the old growth redwoods. Like, these people are, like, getting it back. They are more educated than ever. They're more making money in new ways and using whatever they got to save their past and make trails into the future. The Yokuts are definitely a group that you need to get to know better. Just because it's not in your history book doesn't mean it's not worth knowing. If you are interested in learning more, check out the description of this video, and I listed some great websites to get you started. Before I let you go, I got to show you about one more person. Her name is Wilma Mankeller, and she was the first female chief of the Cherokee Nation. Here she is accepting the, the Medal, of, Medal of Freedom from President Bill Clinton in 1998. This is what she says about all indigenous people, and it should really hit home for you. Wilma Mankiller says, a significant number of people believe tribal people still live in dress as they did 300 years ago. During my tenure as principal chief of the Cherokee Nation, national news agencies requesting interviews sometimes asked if they could you know, film a tribal dance or if I could wear traditional clothing for the interview. I doubt that they asked the President of the United States to dress like a pilgrim for an interview. I don't know. She's pretty awesome. So that is the indigenous people of California, the Yokuts. So please, go learn some more.